Hello and welcome to another edition of I Speak Electric on Best EV. Today we're peering into our crystal ball and trying to predict the future of electric vehicle technology. And it's going to be tough, let's face it, but at least we can have some fun trying. Now there's no way we're going to cover it all today, so we'll take our pick of a few topics and get stuck into the details. Hello, my name is Martin Lee and welcome to the channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you never miss a show. Well, it's impossible to predict how much and how fast range is going to improve. Look, if we look back 10 years, the first modern mass-produced EVs like the Nissan Leaf and the Renault Zoe were just coming on stream, and we were seeing a range in these cars. You know, we were lucky on a good day of getting 100 kilometers. Although this was plenty to do most people's daily commute, it certainly wasn't an impressive stat to win people over. Fast forward 10 years to 2021, and we've been given some cars that will easily pass 400 kilometers, and in favorable conditions, go past 600 kilometers. You have to think that we may well see the 1,000 kilometer mark reached at some stage in the not too distant future. But how will we get to that figure? Well, there's more than one answer to that. Solid state batteries have been five or 10 years away for the last 20 or 30 years. It's been a false dawn for so many people who have been waiting to go EV until they arrive. They read about them in the press and much like hydrogen and solid state batteries. It sounds really impressive in theory, but we need to wait for these things to arrive until then. There are great EVs on the roads right now. But if future technologies do arrive, solid state batteries promise a much greater energy density. Let's just hope that the technology can be priced competitively when it does arrive. Now, solid state batteries aren't the only way to increase energy density. We're seeing constantly cell chemistry improvements and form factor evolving from the big cell makers. This evolution goes hand in hand with the cost and availability of the raw materials. And it's not just a case of what we can do, but what we should do. Reducing the levels of, for instance, cobalt in car batteries is progressing at a rapid rate, and some chemistries have expunged it completely. So it seems that the battery packs are evolving to be cheaper, more energy dense, with higher capacities. Manufacturers are now putting battery packs upwards of 100 kilowatt hours into their cars. The Lucid Air is promising a range of over 700 kilometers off just 113 kilowatt hours. But let's flip the quest for range on its head and talk about the future of charging, which may reduce the need for such large battery packs. We've mentioned various ways to charge your EV on previous shows on this channel, and now we've even briefly looked at charge speeds and how they're evolving. But for example, a 350 kilowatt charger, which exists today, we don't have the technology for every EV on the road to be mass produced to take advantage of that. But in a chicken and egg example, the chargers have come first and the cars are definitely catching up. The technology is changing rapidly. Future EV technology will build on its advances to date. Take the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the Kia EV6 as examples. They will charge at well over 200 kilowatts, maybe even 230. On a full charge, taking you around 500 kilometers, the Tesla Model 3 long range will also charge at these speeds and add 100 kilometers of range in only a 15 minute stop. So perhaps the future of EVs rests as much in the volume and speed of chargers as it does in battery capacities. Who knows if a car can travel on a motorway for three hours straight, then recharge in the time it takes the driver to grab a coffee and use the services. Surely that's enough. Or should we aim for more? Let's talk about smart metering and vehicle to grid. As much as I love to see new and futuristic EVs coming, the next part of the show is about something I'm really excited about, and it has to do with the applications of electric vehicles beyond what a traditional combustion car could ever achieve. We're talking about the future of EVs, so I won't dwell on what's being done today, but let's fast forward 10 years to the end of the decade. At that stage, we may well have a fully rolled out smart metering system in many countries. Some countries are pretty close to it already. Here in the UK, we have smart metering systems that can change your electricity tariff half hour by half hour. And therefore, if there's excess renewables on the grid, rather than turning off 
renewable generation, which can be expensive, it's actually cheaper to get EV owners to charge their cars for free, even paying EV owners to take electricity off the grid when there's excess renewables. That reduces demand on the grid at peak times and balances the demands on the infrastructure so we can utilize renewable generation. With the advent of vehicle-to-grid technology, we begin to expand the possibilities of what an EV can do. It's no longer just something that will move you and your family around. It's a store of energy, and that energy can be used to run our houses and our electricity grids. As the amount of wind and solar deployed increases, we can use smart metering to encourage people to charge up their cars and store excess energy, for example, during a windy night when the country's asleep. Then, the next morning, we use smart metering and vehicle-to-grid technology to incentivize people to sell that energy back into the grid rather than firing up fossil fuel power plants. We can start to use our cars to power the buildings in which we work, play and shop. Now, there are trial projects happening all around the world right now, but we think by the end of the decade, this will be commonplace and mainstream. Thirdly, other modes of transport. So far, we've only talked about cars, but as we all know, the motor car isn't the only means of transportation. Now, it seems to be in the world of private transportation, the most advanced EV technology is being fostered. Just take a look at how Tesla has driven on an entire industry. But we're starting to see the technology being applied elsewhere. Now, where I live, you want to see the amount of electric bikes out there. There are electric bike hire schemes and people buy their own ones on a weekend as fast food deliveries are nipping around on cool retrofitted electric bikes. We're seeing electric cargo bikes and electric vans delivering goods for the last mile. It's only a matter of time before some courier companies employ exclusively electric vehicles. In countries like Norway and Denmark, we're starting to see electric ferries being rolled out by the end of the decade. We think many short boat journeys and ships and ferries will be done purely on electric power. Let's take the example of the Ellen. It's a 650-ton, 60-meter-long ferry running between two islands in Denmark. It can carry 30 cars and 200 passengers. It covers 22 nautical miles, has a battery of 4.3 megawatt hours, and uses two 750 kilowatt propulsion motors. That's about the same total power output as an all-electric Lotus Evia. Number four, powering our EVs. We've touched on charging our cars in this video already and how that might change in the future, but we didn't mention where the power is going to come from. And that is something that's already changing rapidly. Let's take a step back further. EVs are criticized, and in many cases rightly so, for their environmental impact during production. Although far from perfect, they're still much better than combustion counterparts over a lifetime. But things are changing and will continue to do so. Let's have a look at the future of EV technology with factories. We're beginning to see car factories using only renewable energy in the production of cars and batteries. So in the future, we may well have factories that produce using solely renewable energy. Even the equipment used to mine the materials operated by renewables. And as the 2030s progress, materials from recycled EV batteries become available in much bigger volumes than they are today. Many of those original EV batteries are still on the roads, but second and third life use will continue and also recycling will further cut down on the environmental impact. But it's also about how the electricity that powers our EVs is produced. At the moment, we typically have centralized systems based on fossil fuel power plants in many countries, but that's all changing. And it's changing at an increasingly fast pace. Microgrids and self-generation are becoming more widespread. People are increasingly having solar panels fitted to their roofs. Shopping centers, schools have solar fitted and can charge cars with excess energy produced during the day. Only time will tell how far advanced this becomes, but it's an exciting period in history. We're going through so many changes so rapidly, it's hard to keep up, but we do know by the end of the decade, our EVs will be driving around, powered by renewables, and those cars being produced will be made in renewable-led facilities. So in summary, it's been a fascinating look into the future like that. Also really difficult. Just look at the pace of change over the last decade and try and extrapolate that to the next decade. It's almost impossible to accurately predict 
even the kind of cars we'll be driving in 10 years. Will we all have massive two, 300 kilowatt hour batteries? Or in 10 years, will charging be everywhere? Therefore, the batteries can actually get smaller. You see, smaller batteries that charge quickly, if there are enough chargers around where you want them, mean that we can all carry around smaller and therefore lighter batteries. That is better for efficiency. What will the future hold? We don't know, but it's so exciting to think about. Have we over or underestimated the technology in today's show? Let us know what you think in the comments below. What future EV technology are you excited about and what would you like to see? Let us know below. We'll keep the conversation going. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. It tells us to make sh more shows just like this. And we'll see you on the next one.